Well, Suzanne Senna is an Emmy-nominated television personality, former Fox News Channel anchor, and the founder of Senna Series Media Training. She also played Brooke Alvarez on the comedic TV series, The Onion News Network. She's an author and keynote speaker, and she's an alumna of Michigan State University and native of Dearborn, Michigan. So Suzanne, great to welcome you to MSU today. Oh, thanks so much, Russell. I, I have such fond memories, and I love to get back whenever I can and see the beautiful campus. I think only later in life do you realize how fortunate you were to be at such an amazing place to get your education. You know, it's really cool. Couldn't agree more. Well, to, to start off our conversation, Suzanne, just sort of briefly describe from when you graduated from MSU to where you are today, sort of your career path. Well, I'll try and, and kind of uh, shorten it up a bit because it's been an unusual career path, which I think in itself is a lesson. You know, I think when we go to school, we think we have to know what we're going to do, what we're going to be when we grow up, right? What, we, what we're going to do when we graduate. And the truth is, I found that my life, my, my book of my life has so many different chapters, never could have anticipated them, um, would never believe that a whole direction would change completely at one point or another or do that several times. But it, but it really has. Um, you know, when I went to state, I really had thought I wanted to be in advertising. And so advertising and PR, I focused my, my study all on whatever curriculum would, would fit that. But very quickly after that, I realized, you know, I, I do think I want PR. There's no exact degree in it, or at least there wasn't then. Um, so I started looking for jobs in PR. And I put uh, a, my cover letter in the form of a press release because I thought that was very creative and clever and sent that out everywhere I thought I might want to live. Now, growing up in Michigan, I'm a huge fan of all the different seasons and how beautiful it is. But for me, I wanted to go somewhere where the weather was a little more consistent. So I looked at places all along uh, the Texas coastline, all, all along, all the way up, even to Washington state, where I knew it was just beautiful with water and uh, a little combination of, of all the things I liked. I got hired briefly by a company in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I knew one person there living there. And I had a rule that as long as I knew one person somewhere, I could, I could try it out. So I did that, but um, very quickly, that did not seem to be the right fit for me. And uh, to be quite honest, I think I had these grandiose ideas that I would come out of school and make $60,000 or more a year. And what they offered me was so low. And I thought, well, this is not where I wanna be. You're not realizing that the experience would eventually pay off. But the long and short of it is um, I had a strong business, uh, I guess mind, and also that marketing PR um, natural skill. So I found myself drawn to marketing positions. I started working in the hotel industry. I was working in um, selling rooms, I guess, um, and being involved in tourism. And I really liked that because there was a performance aspect, um, but it was also a lot of skill. And, and having gone to Michigan State, I actually lived in the Brody Complex, which was really big for the hotel restaurant industry um, development. So I had a lot of friends who had, had dealt with that. And I started doing marketing for restaurants and I loved that. I loved it. Um, that evolved from what I had done in the hotel business. And then I started my own company. And I look back now and think that's crazy because I think I was about 23 when I did that. But I always say that I, I had this sort of blissful ignorance. Like I didn't know that I shouldn't do that. And I just decided I wanted to do so many different things. And the only way to do it was to have my own business. And because I liked restaurant marketing, I approached some restaurants in the Albuquerque area and pitched myself um, to do their marketing. And then I got hired and I got clients and I would do their advertising. I would write their radio spots. I would perform because I was also a talent on camera and also do the voiceovers. And it was crazy. I was really loving what I did and that just kept going. But Along the line, my love of performance came out. I had been doing acting since I was a kid um, in high school and everything else, and then voiceovers. And I worked at the radio station at Michigan State, um, I think WBRS. And I, I just saw more and more of that happening where suddenly I was playing the role of an anchor or reporter on a commercial because I was doing a lot of acting as, as long as well as doing my marketing um, jobs. 
And, um, and a company called me, a big CBS affiliate called and said, we would really like you to come out here and work for us. And I said, no, 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 I'm not really a reporter. I just play one on TV. Um, but they were very interested and they flew me out and they loved me. And what I learned then is that it was really about communication, which, right, that's what I studied at State. Didn't mean to be a broadcaster, didn't even really think about pursuing it, but sort of fell into it. And I knew then that there was something that I had that might work in this arena. So what I did was I asked around. I didn't want to take that job. I felt false. Um, one of my favorite movies is Broadcast News. I don't know if you've seen it, right? But in Broadcast News, there's a news anchor who started doing sports and they made up a rumor that he was going to leave and they got into a bidding war and he gets promoted to like the main anchor and his career is wildly successful, but he's afraid that people are going to find out he doesn't know what he's doing. Or as he said in the film, um, I don't get the news I'm reading. I didn't want to be that person. So I asked around and I, through networking, very quick networking, I got introduced to an agent in Los Angeles who said, you know, don't, don't do that. You're better at this. And basically pretty quickly after that, I got a job at E! Entertainment as an entertainment reporter. And you could probably hear it in my voice. You know, I'm not your standard news type. I'm definitely more enthusiastic and have that kind of energy. So that was, that was really how it started. And one thing led to another. I almost got the job Kelly Ripa got. Um, and then I transitioned into doing what I would call legit news as opposed to entertainment news. And I was working nationally at the Fox News Channel. Um, but at the end of the day, it all for me, I, I still wanted to do too many things. I didn't like to be restricted. When you have a news job, um, you do news and you can't do other things. You can't do commercials. You can't, um, you can't write a script and sell it. You can't do those things. So when I left Fox, I opened up my own company again, um, being an entrepreneurial type. And I decided what I was good at and was needed um, were skills on the teleprompter. And that's how my business started, Senna Series Media Training. I started with teleprompter and it wasn't people who wanted to be TV hosts. It was executives who had to follow Bill Gates at a speaking engagement and didn't know how to use a prompter. Um, and honestly, Russell, all these years later, I've never advertised and the word of mouth just spread and spread. And as, as you and I talked beforehand about now that the whole world has turned into broadcasters working from home, you know, there's, there's really no end to the, uh, the amount of clients that, that come my way. I'm very fortunate in that. So that was a great <laughs> description of your career path. And, you know, Suzanne, it reminds me of something we'll explore more too, that we talked a bit about off the air is that you were a precursor on combining so many different skills. It's almost like you're not just a reporter now, or you're not just a PR. You're a, in a broad terms, a communication specialist. Obviously, you may have more strengths, but it, I'd, I think for a lot of the, the kids today, you yeah. were an early person adopting that sort of sort of do it all strategy. I think I, I love the way that you've just um, you know summarized that because I will be honest, and I think this is an important message. Throughout my career, career, excuse me, I would have people say, don't, you're trying to do too much. You can't be this and be that, you know, you can't be an actress and also go there and, and be a reporter now. No one will take you seriously. So when I stopped commercial acting and went to work at E, I pretended I never did the acting. And then when I went into regular news, people said, well, don't tell anyone about your entertainment background, but it all comes together. And I'm a big believer that you should write down all the different things you want to explore in your life. And as long as they're there, some people call it a vision board. I just call it my career chart. Um, as long as it's in front of you, it will find the timing and the place. I actually remember being on a plane five years before I launched my company, I put together a program because it came to me that nobody's teaching people how to be TV hosts. And that's, I wish I had had it, right? So I sketched it out then and I put it in a folder. Five years later, I, I launched the business. And so, you know, don't listen to people who say you have to choose one direction. You don't. And whatever you choose now doesn't mean that's where you stay forever. But everything builds upon everything else. Never would have had the lead in the Onion News Network scripted TV series had I not been a national news anchor and found the funny in it. <laughs> Catching up with a Michigan State University alumna Suzanne Senna on MSU today. And Suzanne, 
based on sort of what you've described and what we've talked about, how would you even describe what you do if someone says, oh, Suzanne, what do you do for a living? I'm curious to hear what you would say. Yeah, you know, that's funny you say that. Um, my father, um, who passed away a couple of years ago, had real trouble with that as well. Well, what does your daughter do? I don't know. Ask her. Um, it's, it, yeah, it's hard to say. I, you summed it up best. I say now I'm a communication expert. Um, I do many things. I uh, have many different divisions in my life. I am first and foremost, I think, at heart, an instructor and a coach. Um, I'm that way in general, you know, whether it's speaking or teaching, I'm very motivational because I think I came from a place where people didn't think I would be successful or people saw roadblocks and I never saw those. And it's important to me to share that with others that nobody can stop you, but you, you know, limit really only exists in your mind. And I, one of the greatest quotes I've ever heard was whether you think you'll succeed or you won't, you're right. Okay. So whatever you think is going to happen. So I like to, to encourage people to reach for the stars. So what do I do? Uh, well, I do a lot. I'm a talent coach. I coach on set. I'm an executive performance coach. I work with top level companies. Um, and now I work with anybody from an entrepreneur who has to put videos online and doesn't know how to be charismatic to again, executives who have to have these Zoom meetings and encourage people how to be, be comfortable so that they're confident in that. And I guess that leads me to one of the taglines that I've used for my company, which is we sell confidence. At the end of the day, it's really about being confident in what you're doing. And I'm a, I'm a good confidence builder. So there's that. I do those things. Well, Suzanne, you segued me beautifully into my next question because uh, about a, a year or so ago, around the beginning of the pandemic, you started a podcast. You're known as saying confidence is contagious. It's really the, the key to your life really is confidence. So tell us about how the confidence connection, building trust in a virtual world, how did the idea come about? And why did you decide a podcast was the best way to deliver those messages you were looking to share? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, over the years, I had been asked several times but to, by people, why don't you do a podcast? Why don't you? And I thought, no, why, why do a podcast? Everybody does a podcast, right, Russell? We're all doing podcasts. And, and that's true. And so for me, it was really about getting the message out about confidence. It really was. And people would say to me, how do you monetize that? And I say, I don't, I don't, I don't try to monetize it. I'm really doing it because I believe in what I'm saying. And I'll be really honest. I wanted to have access to people who knew more than I did about some things. And I, I find that so inspiring. And because I'm a trained interviewer, because I, I feel I'm a good host um, and I'm so deeply curious about people that I do it for me, but then people have access to those people through me. So in fact, we're just sort of re revamping the podcast now because the virtual world tagline with that came in because we were all freaked out, right? And it turns out that overall, the message is the same pandemic or no pandemic. We want to know about the people who've made it, how they made it, what struggles they went through so that we are inspired. People are shocked sometimes when they find out things like, well, my family didn't want me to go to college because I was a female. And that sounds so archaic um, and I'm not that old, but it was definitely a shock to them that I would go to college. Well, you know, when people hear about some of the struggles I went through or some of the struggles that the people you admire out there went through, it can be very, very encouraging. One of my favorite um, interviews I've done is with the president of CBS studios, David Stapp. If you listen to that, you'll be blown away by his humility and by his his down to earth nature. And the fact is he did not know what he was doing. He basically ascended in his amazing career by telling people, Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you help me out? And being honest about it, not trying to be somebody he wasn't to admit strengths, but also to admit weaknesses, just to know, to be authentic. And there are such great messages in that. And, you know, my life was enriched from having that conversation. And I hope others who listen find it enriching as well. And Suzanne, I think that's part of the beauty of the podcast medium is that it takes a little time for that story to evolve and, and come out for people. And because you can consume audio while you're doing other things, I think that's part of why it's really taking off. Because as you and I know, it's really just online, on-demand audio. It seems to have sometimes this magic aura about it, but that's really all it is. But more and more people are engaging with it that way. 
country. So, oh, a hundred percent, Russell. Over the last um, you know year, we've seen such an increase in people listening to podcasts because they've looked for more to do. Frankly, they've they've looked for more forms of entertainment, and then by virtue of finding one, they look for others. And yeah, it's a great medium, and you know, it's also a great outlet if you're creative and um, and you have a message you want to get out there. There seems like there's something for everybody. Well, Suzanne, let's back up before I let you go. Why coming out of high school in Dearborn was MSU the place for you? I'm trying to think of something that sounds really great and uh, interesting and um, motivational, but here it is. (laughs) So two things. (laughs) One, my older brother um, had gone to um, University of Michigan. That, that's it, guys. That's it. Um, I had to go to the opposite school. I had to. Um, and the other thing is really, I mean, the campus was so beautiful, but I just had heard great things about student life. And I have to say, I didn't know what I was getting into, right? I didn't even know for sure about going to college. And when I did, um, it was a big lofty goal, Michigan State, right? And I got accepted and I remember being dropped off there and thinking, what have I done? You know, first time ever living away from home. But one thing I got in that first year that was so striking and shaped me for the rest of my life was I understood now what I was capable of. And I was treated with respect. And that sounds funny, but having been a kid in sort of an environment where, you know, dad was in charge and I was the female and, you know, not great expectations. I, I had unlimited opportunities, you know, and my skills were able to be developed and noticed. And then when somebody I respected, respected me, it made me feel better about myself. I ended up getting very involved in organizations. I was with the original members of the Michigan State water ski team um, when they started it. I was actively involved in that. I was actively involved in special events. I pitched some big event to have where we brought in musicians. And that's, that's really, when you think about the company I started in Albuquerque, I did say it was restaurants, but it turned into an event marketing company. And I got all of that experience at Michigan State because we worked with advertisers and we worked with, you know, performers and I worked with getting the word out and marketing posters. And really it just, it helped me grow into who I I am and and understand my capabilities, I think. How would you say this whole crazy communication world has changed the most over the years and what's on the frontier? I know we could have a conference on this and and part two kind of, so based on that, what do you recommend to the young students sitting in classes Mm -hmm. like you did a few years ago if they want to get into some aspect of it. Well, <laughs> that's, that's a lot there, I know. <laughs> no, but you know, it's 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 changed enormously, obviously. And with that enormous change come it comes enormous opportunity. Things exist today, Russell, that you and I would never have imagined you could make a living at. You know, influencers. I work with influencers and they're 21 and they're making millions. And how? Why? Because they've got a camera in front and people want to uh, see how they're living. And that's great, more power to those people, especially the people who do it in a smart business way and build their companies. That's fantastic. But I would say that the biggest thing is learn now, take advantage of these trends. I remember a few years back, I want to say it was even less than 10 years ago, attending a conference here with all the the network um, heads, all of the different TV studio heads. And they were saying within a year or two, people would be watching television mostly on their devices. And I thought that's ridiculous. As I look at my phone to see the latest episode of The Handmaid's Tale or whatever I'm doing, if you can look at the trends and realize all the advantages out there to you now um, for every aspect of communication and learn what you can, get as much knowledge as you can. And as I started this conversation by saying, don't limit yourself, really don't limit yourself to what might be out there because the next great thing hasn't been invented yet. And I think we've shown as, gosh, I think we've shown that we are people who are open to change, drastic change. And the pandemic is a great example of that. It was terrifying. It's, it's been a tough time in a lot of ways, but it also changed the playing field forever in a good way for businesses. Because think about it, the people who use the companies that had the money to have offices all over the world and fly to Italy and fly um, to Germany to speak with clients and the little companies who couldn't afford to do that. It's all even now, folks, you just put on your computer. So in a way, 
communication has evolved in, in, in a sense of making everything more accessible, every dream more attainable. My husband's very accomplished in what he does. And um, he's interested now in something called IoT, the internet of things, which is completely not my area. And he just decided randomly, I'd like to get certified in this. And he's about to finish a course from Stanford and be certified online, which maybe existed a while back, but nobody would really think that that was a serious deal, but it is. I want a certification, I can find it. You want a certification, you can find it. You wanna learn how to cook something, you can find it. So there, there are less limits now than ever before. So listen to whatever's inside, go for it. And if you don't know how to do something, ask, because there is somebody out there who does know and who is willing to teach you how, just tune into their YouTube channel, right? That's right. Well, Suzanne, it's been delightful getting to know you a little bit today. And uh, thank you for joining me on MSU today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Russell. It's, it's fun to, to speak with uh, well, a fellow Spartan. <laughs> and that's Suzanne Senna. And uh, you can find out a lot more about her online. And we've come up with her new title today, Worldwide Communication Specialist, because nothing else really captures it all. But SuzanneSenna.com. And we're pronouncing it like it's a double N, but just one N. SuzanneSenna.com. And I'm Russ White. This is MSU Today.